Welcome to Rising. We have another great show for you today. Lots and lots and lots to talk about. Why don't you start us off, Brianna? Well, Donald Trump pled not guilty yesterday on 34 felony counts of falsifying business records, making him the first sitting or former U.S. president to face arrest. Prosecutors accused Trump of leading a catch-and-kill operation to suppress unflattering stories about him and influence the 2016 election. They say he did this through a series of payments concealed via false business documents. The former president made a brief appearance in a Manhattan courtroom before flying back to Mar-a-Lago, where he spoke to supporters. Our elections were like those of a third world country. And now this massive election interference at a scale never seen before in our country, beginning with the radical left, George Soros-backed prosecutor Alvin Bragg of New York, who campaigned on the fact that he would get President Trump. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. This is a guy campaigning. He wanted to get President Trump at any cost, and this before he knew anything about me, didn't know a thing about me. He was campaigning. And I never thought anything like this could happen in America. Never thought it could happen. The only crime that I have committed is to fearlessly defend our nation from those who seek to destroy it. Now, with the indictment against the president unsealed, it seems some of even the staunchest never-Trumpers are admitting the case isn't the slam dunk that they were hoping for. Let's check in on CNN. You know, to be fair, I don't know uh, that a case like this would be brought against Donald Trump, real estate developer, for the same alleged... I mean, who knows? Maybe it would be. But uh, on the other hand, who knows? Is it what you thought it was going to be? And are you... Unimpressed. It, it is what I thought it was going to be uh, in terms of focusing on the payments that were made, the falsification of the records, and really tied to the payment that was made to Stormy Daniels. Uh, in terms of a case that's being brought against a former president, it's a little underwhelming. Um, mm. there's, there's not more to it. Uh, there's not more violations tax violations. Um, there's not an incredible new set of facts that we didn't know about publicly. It's really the facts of this case as they have existed for basically almost seven years. And speaking as someone who very strongly does not want Donald Trump to get the Republican presidential nomination, I'm extraordinarily distressed by this document. I think this is even weaker than I feared it would be. Uh, and I, I think uh, it's, it's easily subject to being dismissed or a, a, a quick acquittal for Trump. And of course, despite what the president said in his speech in Mar-a-Lago, the election was not stolen. Now, across the country, the president just secured a major win in his legal battles with Stormy Daniels this morning. A California appellate court sided with the president and ordered the adult actress to pay Trump's legal fees in her failed defamation case against him. Trump's next criminal court appearance is scheduled for December 8th of this year. So, Robbie, what did you make of this? Did you echo the sentiments of folks on even kind of the liberal mm -hmm. mainstream channels, MSNBC, CNN, who were rather underwhelmed by the contents of the indictment? Yes, I was uh, equally underwhelmed. Um, you know, when you're reading this, this is count after count after count of basically the same thing, which, you know, this is— Typical behavior. Let's, I'm sure a lot of people on the right are saying no one has ever been treated this way that Donald Trump's being treated. Well, of course, when they prosecute people, you know, they pad the, the document. They try to find you know, it's the same crime over and over again, every instance of it. Um, so they find all, all these instances of him um, mentioning the, the payments to Michael Cohen. So, so this is very, we've got to be very careful here. He's not actually being prosecuted here for the Stormy Daniels payment. It's the reimbursing of Michael Cohen, which was disguised on the ledgers of the Trump organization, that is getting him in trouble here. And in the indictment, it says, it states as fact, that the Michael Cohen payment to Stormy Daniels was illegal. And that strikes me as a little bit troubling, potentially, because that is, the, I mean, Michael Cohen pleaded guilty to that, but that is like that's the element of a different case. That like the, in the context of this case, has that been established that that's an illegal payment? Well, so, okay, my my issue with this is a little different. Michael Cohen admitting guilt to mm -hmm. having 
illegally paid Stormy Daniels, I, I don't think is the problem here. I think the, the real problem is that fundamentally the falsification of records charges that you're pointing to, that's what the 34 um, charged crimes are, are in fact misdemeanors in the state of New York. Mm -hmm. To In New York, you can elevate a misdemeanor, misdemeanor into a felony if the misdemeanor was done in furtherance of another crime. In this case, they're using the payments to Stormy right. Daniels as the hook to el escalate this from a fine, the likes of which Hillary Clinton had to pay for funds being used for the uh, Steele dossier, to something for which Donald Trump could conceivably go to jail, a felony. The problem is, it is not clear that the New York appeals court has never weighed in on whether you can actually do that, so it's an untested legal theory, and moreover, it raises the question, if the hook here is the federal crime, why wasn't a federal venue the right jurisdiction right. for this? And then why did the federal prosecutors decline to charge Trump when they well, were going after thing. Cohen, right. when Trump was at that time in that case right. basically an unindicted co-conspirator? Right, exactly. Uh, and John Bolton mentioned it in that clip as well, starting to get into very broad waters for what, I mean, already it's murky what is, you have broad First Amendment free speech rights, um, the court has uh, further muddied in, in a way that a lot of liberals don't like, money and speech and, and, and you know, where, where your campaign finance obligation um, begins and your free speech rights end. Um, this is a pretty broad reading, I think, of what counts as, you know, campaign finance related Stuff is, is is literally everything he spends while run, that any person spend any money they spend while running for president is going to be a campaign finance expense. Yeah, that it was starts exactly, to get a little thorny. That was exactly the issue uh, with um, John, Edwards John Edwards and precisely yeah. why he was not convicted. There are some there are some factual differences there which we should get into. But at the end of the day, a uh, million dollars was paid to his mistress, this woman he was seeing and had a child with, who a child he initially denied, um, while his wife at the time was dying of cancer. Um, the court ultimately decided that because right. the payments were uh, routine and continued after the end of his campaign, it was very difficult to prove John John Edwards. Mens rea, his intent to, to, that he was doing this to boost him in his electoral prospects as opposed to just hide his infidelity from his family. Trump's case on that is a little bit weaker, one, because he made just the one-off payment prior to the election and no subsequent payments, and also because there is this color about how he basically said, um, you know, can we postpone paying her as long as possible if we can get to after the election and don't have to pay her at all, which really does suggest that the purpose of this was to hide it from the public, not from his own family. Still, it, it's difficult, right? And it is not the strongest case the stronger case that we imagined. Really, people were imagining, people were theorizing that the reason that Alan Bragg would cho have chosen to bring this case now, when his predecessor, Cy Vance, chose not to bring this case, and when the federal prosecutor chose not to bring this case, must be because there's something more here. And watching other legal experts weigh in, it became clear that without that more here, even if technically there's a way to stretch a, a, a conviction, is this the way that we want to address not only a former president, but someone who was running for re-election, does this start to look like a political prosecution, the likes of which happens in countries that we often look down our nose at? Well, and I think it's very reminiscent. We've almost been down this exact road before with Trump, with the two impeachments, mm -hmm. right? It, the, the first one, you know, you can make a case for it, but I, I think even people who were in favor of it would note that it was much weaker than the second impeachment for really unconscionable awful behavior in the context of the 2020 election versus the you know, potential effort to influence um, a, another country's behavior, which is just diplomacy anyway. Uh, what he wanted them to do was inappropriate, but it was not, you know, Rudy Giuliani facilitated it. It was I, not, it was not totally clear to me the, the extent to which Trump even really understood what was being asked. Um, it was much murkier than what they went after him for the second time. But because they had done that already, right. a lot of people, a lot of people on the right, I mean, you can't blame them for feeling this way. It was like, well, they're going to just, they're just trying to get Trump no matter what. They'll, right. they'll, they'll, they'll on the thinnest thing. So you, if you cry wolf so many times, 
Then when there's the actual wolf, people have tuned you out. I think that's yes. what happened with the two impeachments. Would, and we could have this here, given there's going to be this exactly. future prosecution of him potentially for the Georgian election. Exactly. Spot. That's what's so frustrating. Like, even if I bought into the idea that Democrats should weaponize the courts to do what needs mm -hmm. to get done because Donald Trump presented such an, 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 an unholy threat to the democracy, even if I bought into that, I would say strategically this just, just doesn't make sense given that we presume there are much stronger charges being put together in Georgia, where we have a call. I mean, imagine a call where, in, uh, sorry, a world where instead of the news channels going over and over this idea of payment to porn stars and Stormy Daniels and, Daniels and salacious this and that and the other, they were re playing over and over again the Ravensburger call where you hear Donald Trump saying, can you find 17,000 however many votes that are just one vote more than what we need to close our loss gap. Let, can you just find me the votes? Can you just find me the votes? And laying pressure on the state official, trying to get him to change the results of election. I think in terms of framing this as a democracy-saving prosecution, that is a much better factual context for Democrats to be landing on. And substantively, it's more important. It matters, and it's a better case, unless there's something that we don't know about their inability to make that one stick as well. It just really boggles the mind while they would um, ex use up their political capital, shall we say, on this prosecution. And I wonder if there was coordination or if this is something that uh, Alvin Bragg has gone and chosen to do for his own personal his own, political enrichment. For his own glorification. Yeah. Yeah, which he— Trump is not not wrong when he says that that's something Bragg ran on. It, it's true. Um, and he's, by the way, his press conference yesterday, I think, also left a lot to be desired. When the indictment came out, people thought, well, well, maybe we'll get, all the pundits were saying, we'll get more clarity, we'll get more clarity when we actually hear from Alvin Bragg. And then he answered relatively few um, questions at the podium. He seemed rather defensive, a little scattered to me. Um, when he was asked pointed questions about, is there more, he basically said, well, I don't have to plead everything in this indictment. And that is true. But why, again, strategically, you would make that choice when you know Republicans around the country, conservatives around the country, and even kind of, um, you know, impartial Democrats are, are waiting for you to make this worthwhile, to give some clarity as to why this prosecution now. I don't think he's thinking strategically on behalf of overall, how does he, how, how does someone take, he's, he's thinking in terms of himself, what yeah. makes him look the best. He wants to be involved. See, I think he has an ego about himself for this prosecution. So yeah, that may be the case. Again, I don't have the mens rea for him either, yeah. but his performance yesterday certainly, if, if his goal is to look good and get some political victory out of this, it's not clear to me from his performance yeah. yesterday at that press conference that that's working out for him. Get, uh, drawing more sympathy to Donald Trump, a favorite tactic of people who ostensibly wish to be rid of him, well, I, but I, I seem like this. they can't stop um, uh, throw. You know, if you if you aim for the king, don't miss. Right. It's mi it's miss 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 <laughs> miss miss. I will briefly say that I think that one strategic gain for Democrats out of this is that having this investigate at uh, this prosecution forces Republicans across the country to weigh in, and it does it could potentially have the effect of dividing Republicans and forcing people like DeSantis and everybody else to the mat and saying, I'm either with DeSantis or against him. And while it might gin up some support for Donald Trump, if it has the ultimate effect of balkanizing the Republican Party, Democrats might think they can skate through the whole I don't know. I, I, it's it. not having the effect of balkanizing the Republican Party. So far, it's, it's actually uniting the Republican Party more because everyone, virtually everyone, uh, even the people who don't like Trump and want him gone are being forced to concede that he's... He, Seems like but what do you make of the there. fact that people disapproved of how Ron DeSantis tried to split the baby as he spoke about this prosecution last week? Yeah, I mean, it, this is good for Trump, the way this is be, being done. It's not a split, it's a advantage Trump. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, can see, I can see that argument. If you think that Ron DeSantis was already not a real viable threat, yeah. then pulling more votes away from him toward Trump isn't also helping the pull, Democrats. pulls all the attention again to Trump. Um, there were a lot of other uh, issues for conservatives to be concerned about. There was a Wisconsin Supreme Court election uh, that I, I see some on the right saying, which they lost. Right. Uh, so because they lost that, it's going to be very consequential if you know Wisconsin ends up being a swing state. It's bad. Right, so that, that was all the, the states... focus is on Trump. Right. And that was one of the states where it seemed more likely um, that the local, the elected officials there were potentially willing to go along with some of Trump's uh, theories about election stealing. So the thought was, if a conservative is in that, if that's a conservative state, then next time around, it might not go the same way. There might be a validation for ele uh, Trump's uh, election 
stealing, stop the steal kind of the theories. So yeah, I, I think you're completely right. There are these long-term consequences and it's drawing attention away from those kinds of issues. Whether or not that would have happened, I mean, I think that outcome was gonna happen regardless of whether or not Trump was prosecuted. But yes, our, our Republicans gonna have the resources to focus on much needed issues going on within the party. Mm -hmm. Good question. Well, we have some other things to cover today as well. We're gonna get to that. And Brianna's Radar is up next. Stay tuned.